Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we found that the amount of power required to drive a 2000 kilogram car up a hill, ignoring all the wind resistance, internal resistance, friction, efficiency, all that, it took about 42.2 horsepower, which is 31,480 watts. We found that the equation depended on, upon the change in the height as a function of time, which can be equated to V sine theta, the velocity of the car times sine theta is equal to the change in the height as a function of time and then so we would then calculate the change in potential energy per unit time which is then mg times v sine theta which is 31,480 watts. But now how much additional power would you need to overcome the wind resistance? And typically at a speed of about 60 miles an hour that wind resistance produces a force, a retarding force is about 160 pounds which is about 700 newtons. Now, you can see here on this graph that as the velocity increases, you can see a much more increasing opposing force caused by that wind resistance. So yes, indeed, the faster you drive, the greater the wind resistance, and it's not a linear function. It's kind of like a quadratic function. So the wind resistance becomes quite large quite quickly as you begin to gain quite a bit of speed. But at about 60 miles per hour, about 100 kilometers per hour, it should be around 700 newtons. So the definition of the power is equal to work divided by time and work is defined as force times distance divided by the time and distance divided by the time, well that is velocity. So therefore it's equal to the force times the velocity of the car. The force is known, the velocity of the car is known, so that means that the power required to overcome the wind resistance, and we'll call it power for the wind, is equal to a force of 700 newtons and a velocity in meters per second of 26.817 meters per second. So how many watts is that? It's 700 times 26.817 and that's about 18,772 watts. 18,772 watts. Now notice that is almost, well, that's actually more than 50% the energy required to drive up the hill. So it adds another big factor overcoming wind resistance as well. And if we then convert that to horsepower, so we're going to multiply this times uh, one horsepower for every 746 watts. So we take that number, divide by 746, and we get 25.2 horsepower to overcome wind resistance. So now, if we include the amount of power we need to drive up the hill, plus the amount of power we need to overcome wind resistance, so power total, when we only consider power to go up the hill, plus power to overcome wind resistance, and so that will then be equal to 42.2 horsepower, plus 25.2 horsepower together, that would be 67, 67.4 horsepower, the amount of horsepower required to overcome both the wind resistance and to drive up the hill at 60 miles per hour. But again, that's ignoring friction, engine efficiency, and so forth. So stay tuned and we'll see how those things affect the amount of power required to drive up a hill. And that's how it's done.